elementary school. It's that special time in your life when you find out if you're a bully or if you can fit into a locker. But now, <laughs> the state of New Jersey is worried that schools have stopped teaching the important stuff. Learning cursive may soon be making a return to schools in New Jersey. Yeah, a state lawmaker has introduced a bill requiring elementary school students to learn to read and write in script by the end of the third grade. Many schools stopped mandating cursive in 2019. If passed, cursive would be required um, by the next full school year. Okay, I'm sorry, what? Lawmakers in New Jersey are pushing for schools to start teaching cursive again? While they're at it, why not teach the kids to drive wagons and churn their own butter for lunch? <laughs> Just have kids in the cafeteria like, Hawk, I am famished from a day's journey hunting the Pokemon. Hast thou a Tide Pod for my repast? <laughs> Guys, it's 2019. We don't need cursive anymore, okay? And, like, we should be able to admit that it's always looked pretty stupid. Like, try and write a capital G. It just looks like a drunk-ass music note. <laughs> it's like, what are you? <laughs> And the arguments for the law honestly don't make any sense, right? Like, one New Jersey lawmaker says kids need to learn cursive because that's how they wrote the Constitution. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? Like, you don't need to learn cursive to read the Constitution. Also, not everyone needs to read the Constitution, right? They might have a job where it's not important, like accountant or president of the United States. <laughs> Here's the thing, man, this happens every generation, right? This always happens. Young people adapt to new technology, and then old people want everyone to learn how they learned. I wouldn't be shocked if in 50 years we'll be complaining about our grandkids, like, I hate how kids don't text with their thumbs anymore. <laughs> Phones just scan your text now. In my day, from your brain, you couldn't do that. You had to look down at your phone like a real person and walk into things head first. That's how we kept our brains hard. All right, but let's move on to the world of art. People are always searching for new ways to express the human condition and also to find cool ways to take people's money. And this next exhibit from Art Basel in Miami may be the greatest scam of all time. Two inexpensive everyday items are now passing for mm. pricey works of art. A banana duct tape to a wall is now selling for $150,000 at a Miami art festival. <laughs> the piece is titled Comedian. Two earlier editions have already sold for $120,000 each. <laughs> I honestly don't know what to think about this, because on the one hand, I guess this banana is a comment on how all art is temporary and eventually everything withers and dies, but on the other hand, it's a banana taped to the wall. <laughs> Because, honestly, I, I don't know about a banana as art. All I know is I want art with a long shelf life. <laughs> Can you imagine if you bought Michelangelo's David and the next day it turns all brown and mushy? <laughs> What's also crazy is that the artist sold three of those bananas for over $100,000 each. You know the person I feel really bad for is the guy at the grocery store selling him those bananas. <laughs> yeah. Because think about it, the first time the artist comes in, he buys a banana, it's like, yeah, 50 cents. The second time he comes in, 50 cents. Then the guy at the grocery store sees it on Twitter, and he's like, wait, what? <laughs> the next time the artist comes in, he's like, can I get another banana? He's like, yeah, $20,000. I'm an artist, too. I'm also an artist. All right, but let's move on from bananas to a man who's never eaten fruit in his life. President Trump. <laughs> While he's embroiled in impeachment and foreign scandals, it's nice to see that the commander-in-chief will take time out of, uh, all of these important issues to deal with stuff like this. We have a situation where we're looking very strongly at sinks and showers and other elements of bathrooms where uh, you turn the faucet on in areas where there's tremendous amounts of water, where the water rushes out to sea because you could never handle it, and you don't get any water. You turn on the faucet, you don't get any water. They take a shower and water comes dripping out. It's dripping out, very quietly dripping out. People are flushing toilets 10 times, 15 times, as opposed to once. They end up using more water. So EPA is looking at that very strongly, at my suggestion. Okay, is it just me? Or does it seem like someone took a dump in the Oval Office <laughs> that didn't flush 
and now they're trying to blame it on America's water systems. <laughs> Just feels like that. Mike, the EPA clogged the toilet again.